I think we last met here on opening day in 1982, although we have discussed it intermittently since then. Hunter Davis wrote about it. No one anywhere in the world has ever bulldozed the urban landscape on such a scale before just to produce a bit of open space. And I think he's right. I think that there must be very few examples of taking an area of existing city and compulsorily purchasing houses and industry and knocking it down to make an open space which fitted into an open space plan. You know, Aber Abercrombie's 1943 plan, he wanted to connect up the open spaces in London. And this was one of the connective spaces which had become an area of opportunity thanks to the Luftwaffe. There was a lot of bomb damage here. And so it looked like a great opportunity for making an open space. Do you remember what you thought of it, or what we discussed on the opening day in 1982. Open, bland, unenclosed, vast, ab absence of buildings for sure, but also absence of a sense of place. It was as if the idea of creating an, an open space uh, was all about openness and the sky, uh, and removal rather than creation. When you do the sums, 1982 was after about 40 years' work on the park, and there's been another 35 years' work since then. And I remember, I think you saying at the time, that it was a terrible pity that there was no named designer associated with it. Do you still think that? Yeah, and also I think there's, an abs there's still an absence of, of design. It, it doesn't really have a, a strong character. One of the remarkable things for a park which, in its gestation, has been uh, getting on for 80 years, is there's very few 80-year-old trees. Lord Burkitt, who was head of uh, the GLC's Department of Recreation and Arts, uh, described it as the process of creating Burgess Park as being a process of tearing a bandage off slowly with all the thoughts of scabs being pulled off and so on. I think that's a really false analogy as to what should be happening with creation of a, a, a metropolitan park. But my problems go beyond uh, that. My problem is with the ultimate rationale for this park, which was that there was an open space uh, deficiency um, in, in this area. And I would question the idea of open space deficiency as being a, a, a reason for creating a, la a large park. Remembering the lack of a, a named designer in 1982, there was actually a landscape architect who was much involved, who was Simon Rendell, who I used to describe as the chief landscape architect for the Great London Council. I think maybe his proper title was the leader of the landscape group at the Greater London Council. And he really put a lot of effort into it. He believed in it. He was a capable person. And... I think that the impetus for making the lake came from him. And when we looked at it on our opening day, it didn't seem a success. It seemed like a, a rather dead and useless area of water. But today, it's much better. The, the, the lake and the trees round it, in a sort of 18th century sense, it's what you expect of a landscape park. But have there been any other designers involved? Simon died young. But have, can you think of anybody who one can associate as a design with it? I mean, is that the explanation of why there isn't a design, because they didn't have a designer? Or have there been other inputs that I don't know about? I think it goes beyond just a, a designer. No, I, I, it's, it's a straight answer. I, I, I can't think of a designer associated with Burgess Park, because... Uh, 40 years is time enough to, to, to make a, a park. Uh, just referring to Simon Rendell and his, his team, I recall that they talked about being overwhelmed by the process of road closure notices, and that, that was really what they were doing, a bureaucratic job, rather than getting on to design a, a place which could be used. 
The trouble was that although the British people were willing to accept government guidance in the aftermath of the Second World War, by the 1980s, the idea of spending public money on knocking down houses and getting rid of jobs, it was already politically unfashionable. However, uh, that was also the case in the 1950s and 1960s and the 1970s. There wasn't a political imperative to create a park. Uh, the, the, the GLC wanted to, to spend far, 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 far more uh, on building a, uh, a motorway around uh, inner London uh, rather than getting on with, with parks. Parks were not important. I mean, part of the trouble was... There were few users at the time. I mean, I, I come here regularly, by which I mean about once every 10 or 15 years. And I remember very clearly an intermediate visit on almost as nice a day as today. Maybe about um, 19, 1990 or something. And it was a scary place. It was empty of people, and you really wondered if you were going to get knifed round the corner. Whereas in comparison with that, it's really well used today. I suppose because of, partly because the population has risen a lot since then. But what, it's a, a weekday, a Friday, in the middle of, middle of the afternoon, and it really is a well-used space, isn't it? A Thursday afternoon in, in uh, uh, late May, a rather warm afternoon, hence uh, uh, lots of people sunning themselves on, on the grass. We've chosen to sit in the shade, quite a number of people cycling past, uh, people uh, jogging. A fairly well, it's school time, uh, so uh, the, the children's playground is fairly well used, but not uh, over well used. Presumably it's uh, the school groups uh, wandering around the park, uh, there's a, a fanfare. Yes, that this is a, bit, a big improvement compared with 1982. Um, I would like to go back to the lake, however. The lake is, is dull. It's not an 18th century lake. Uh, I've noted earlier in conversation that there's a, no island. There's no sense. You can see the whole thing at one go. There's no sense of a progression. And you can't use the lake uh, other than to fish. You can't uh, uh, swim in the lake or row on the lake, or sail on the lake. Small dingoes could, could, could be there. Uh, there's, it's just the one use, which is uh, fishing. In the old GLC reports on the park, it explains as one of the objectives that they wanted to create mounding and planting around the edges to dull off that noise. And I think if we were by the lake rather than by Albany Road, then it would be quieter than it is here. Um, a point about the lake. I, I think it's good that they allow fishing. I absolutely agree with you about the boating. And certainly with the recent extension, it should have been planned as a natural swimming pool. But the really big tragedy in the planning and design of Burgess Park is that they filled in the Surrey Canal which would have been a really wonderful structuring feature and a historical feature for the park, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. I recall my first visit to South Camberwell Open Space, I think it was called then, before it was named Burgess Park, which was in 1968. I was, uh, and I came here and there was a, a stand from the GLC and the GLC par uh, Parks Department uh, officer there and uh, I asked, well, well, why are you wanting to, cl to, to close the Surrey Canal? You've got a link with uh, the, uh, the Surrey Docks, uh, a link with the, the River Thames. Uh, it's a, a splendid stretch of water. Uh, and he, he said, because the decision's been made, he gave no rationale, no sense of discussion about it. It was uh, just follow the decision. Except, I think, as he said, it was Port of London Authority. It was nothing to do with it. He disclaimed any responsibility for it. Uh, although uh, they took in part of the, the old Surrey Canal into the, uh, the park. Yes, it, it was a huge opportunity lost. And I think um, the point's well made that the big comparison with the Olympic Park or uh, Mile End Park, where uh, the canals have been uh, kept and appreciated, or the, the River Lee with the Olympic Park, uh, and its canalised sections have been retained. 
adds so much more. And another compliment for the park managers is that they're liberal in the way they run the park. They allow cycling almost everywhere, which the Royal Parks are always trying to discourage. When, when I came here about um, 1990, there were notices all over the place saying no barbecues. And they've come to terms with that, and they've designated barbecue areas. And they're very well used, and that's a good thing. People want to eat in parks, and so let them. Greenwich Park are just putting up notices now saying no barbecues. The Olympic Park's got barbecue areas as well. But, I mean, they're very common around the world, and comparatively rare in the UK. So, full marks to them for that. Uh, to continue the praise of the park's uh, management and maintenance, very little litter uh, here. Uh, we can just see a, a couple of pieces of, uh, of plastic, um, nothing else. Uh, and uh, I think that makes such a difference to the feeling of whether the park is, is looked after or, 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 or not. I, I think that they, it's employed staff who clear up the litter. And it's a pity that they don't have a volunteer program because it would be a way of engaging people in growing plants and growing food, which they would like to do. I, I just can see no reason why they don't follow the precedent of American parks and have a volunteer organizer. And like, they, they, they could have a hundred volunteers working here. And it would give people a feeling of ownership of the park. I, I'm not sure whether that is actually the case. I recall there is a, a section of the volunteers on the uh, Southwark Council website. Uh, it might be worth worth che checking. Talking now in uh, uh, 2017, so 40, getting on for 40 years, 37 years since uh, the 1982 uh, uh, meeting, the, the park has improved Im immensely. immensely. It's, um, it's not really uh, a mature well it's not a, certainly not a mature park uh, it hasn't got large trees as I've mentioned before it hasn't got a got an enclosure it's still very much an open park um, actually that's a, a point well why not use uh, uh, poplar and willow it would have been the, the standard thing in the 1970s and 80s to get instant maturity and then you fell them um, it could have easily done that, and maybe one should think about doing that now. There's still rather much uh, an over-reliance on uh, standard tree planting and uh, grass. The, the big change has been the introduction of bumps, as I, I, I term them. Uh, there's a lot of mounds which have been uh, introduced, and that does give a feeling of variety in terms of space, and also the feeling of elevation. You can be king of the castle. But in a, a slightly strange way, it should be more than bumps. It, it's all rather timid. A thought from me about the planting is that I'm sorry there aren't more food trees. They could have had a wood of sweet chestnuts, and they could have had apples and nuts and all sorts of things to eat. In fact, to go further with the culinary analogy, I think what the park has got now is fairly good ingredients, the lake, the planting, the hills, etc. But what it lacks is a good recipe, a good design. It's just meat and three veg, rather than the kind of recipe that a great park needs, the kind of design that a great park needs. Oh, we do look forward to meeting here in another 30 years at the time. God willing, thank you. Do, do, do they have any, any volunteers working in the park normally? Um, I don't think so, not as such. No. I mean, I don't know. I mean, like, they might have volunteers in there for the tennis club and mm. so on. You know, I think yeah. that's a, uh, it's a pity because lots of people enjoy it. You'd think they'd, they'd get some volunteers. Yeah, yeah. Would, would, would you be willing to volunteer? I am a volunteer, sir. Here, in the park? Not here in the park, but oh. yeah, I mean... Perhaps. How, how do you mean? In what sense? Well, looking after the, the flowers or something like gardening. Yeah, yeah, no, they do. They have. The, I mean, the council take care of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The council. And they, I, I enjoy gardening they, myself. Park, um, what would you call them? 
not inspectors, but um, wardens. Wardens, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the park wardens and that, and yeah. like security. Yeah. Thing, you know? yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. Nice. Uh, um, is the ping pong popular? Yeah, people. No one on it right now. No. Yeah, mm. no, it does. There's usually people playing. Mm. Yeah, it's good. It's good. They seem to have them dotted all over the place now, more and more of them coming up. Yeah, it's, it's good. good. Providing it's not too windy because the ball's only light and it takes it off, you know. Uh, it's, it's like, I like today's, right? It's a nice... Oh, it's a wonderful day, isn't it? Gorgeous, isn't it?